Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with another MTG Arena. This is for the Guilds of Ravnica Constructed, which is a singleton, or not a singleton, it's a one match, uh, not competitive constructive. I really, really wish that they would have made this competitive constructive and put in a sideboard because uh, it's getting very repetitive playing it's the same decks. I think that this is the deck to play because it puts other decks in a damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario. Um, this is my fourth league. I busted these out pretty quickly. I apologize for not taping the league. I thought I had my mic plugged in and <laughs> apparently it was not plugged in. So, uh, anyway, we'll show the deck tech with it. Maybe I'll play like one match. Then I have to get down to the store as I'm running late. So I went five and one. This is my third consecutive five and one because it always seems to be that arena is going to kick you in the balls. One, one match. There's going to be one match where you're going to keep a three lander and never hit that fourth land. Uh, or it, that that's, I think all the, the one losses were kind of those scenarios where it was just, it just, just, yeah, you keep those, those hands and you get punished for, uh, not getting your fourth or fifth land. Cause this deck d definitely wants it. So anyway, uh, price support still really bad for these. It's a 500 entry, and for going five wins, you get a whopping 600 coins. So you get you get two rares and 100 coins for for investing five uh, games, at least five win games into this. So we'll click on these, and we get a card that I have four of and a garbage card. So yes, okie dokie. Anyway, let's go over to the deck. So I've I've tried uh, Gil's Ravnica with a black blue non surveil with a Thief of Sanity. Um, if you're gonna go this, cut the thieves completely and go creatureless. Uh, every deck is running a lot of creature removal, and the Thief of Sanity just dies. Uh, same thing. Like I, I think you can keep the Plague Crafter. Uh, this was of course a failed. Uh, I went. I think I went two and two with this deck for the first league that I went, but. Ritual Soot is is really, really bad in this format because a lot of times it just doesn't wipe uh, a lot of the uh, more problematic creatures like the Doom Whispers, like the uh, Crackling Drakes, and it doesn't even hit Night, Night Veil Predator. It doesn't hit Aurelia. There are a lot of things where if you're going against those type of matchups, like Celestia as well, it doesn't hit the, the four mana one that puts out a 4-4, four, four, and then when it dies, puts out two two twos. So I didn't really like this deck. I, I'm thinking about reviving it for a mono blue mill type strategy. Of course, I want to kind of do things that are unique to the format. Uh, right now, you're seeing a lot of Boros, of course. Uh, I've seen a, a, a couple different versions of Boros. One of them was running the trying to to really work off of the the Runaway Steamkin Experimental Frenzy, and they're, I'm sure they're putting Boros just for Justice Strike and for the Integrity to Intervention because those tend to be some of the better cards in this format. Uh, the format's fast, but you also will go up against a lot of different Demir decks. I've seen a, an all surveil many many times, like a bunch of these matchups. I haven't dropped a game to to Demir yet. Um, uh, with this deck, I think the, surprisingly, a lot of the games that I have lost have been against Celestia with this deck. So, uh, let's, let's just go down the deck tech for it though. This is going to be a Jeskai control list. I think that Jeskai allows for the, uh, really, really powerful cards in this format. Um, the whole reason you want to splash Jeskai is it makes you go from a horrible matchup versus Boros to an insanely good matchup against Boros for, with cards like Deafening Clarion. So I highly, highly suggest that you do go Jeskai. The mana is still pretty good. I'm, I, my mana still needs to be messed with. You do want to run a very, very high land count though. So I'm running, uh, seven, uh, islands, three mountains, and then 16 of between the gates and the, uh, shock lands. So, uh, that is going to be a 26 land deck. The, uh, Cards you want to run is just a lot of removal. Tons and tons and tons of removal. Eventually, the Crackling Drake will get you there, or the Rao's Eric's Ult, or Nib Mazette, or a big expansion to Explosion. All of these have done a kill. I've For all the leagues that I've played, they've all uh, been able to, to finish off my opponent. So, Integrity Intervention is really good because it, it plays double duty with protecting your Drake. There are a lot of times your opponent will cast the either Fine Finality, if you're going against Golgari, and it puts you above the Finality. Uh, they will cast the uh, Lava Coil, and I believe there's other, one other 4 damage spell. No, no, there's a 5 damage spell, Response Resurgence. And all of these, uh, the Integrity portion of it will actually protect your Crackling Drake. So I think it's a pretty, pretty awesome card with having that split actually being relevant in this deck. However, this is just a bad Lightning Helix. We're using it in this deck as a bad Lightning Helix. It does three damage, you gain three life. Late game, you can actually throw these at your opponent between 
the interventions and ionizes and expansion to explosion, you actually can go the burn route. I thought about cutting a couple of cards and putting the six damage can't be countered spell in here too, because it's really good in the mirror. It's something that can take care of basically any creature in the format, including Doom Whisper. Uh, there's not really anything that's above this the, the six uh, toughness, not even Molder Hulk. Uh, so I uh, Inescapable Blaze, I think is what the, uh, the card is called. That's definitely an option for this deck. Uh, Lava Quail and Justice Strike are your best spot removal cards. They are the kind of the one-two punch. You're gonna you're gonna uh, keep your opponents from getting a board state. Uh, Definitely, Clarion can also punish people that, that go wide. So both Celestia and Boros with the Clarion. The Clarion is also pretty good to give your Crackling Drake Life Link. There will be a lot of turns you'll cast this on turn five. Have like four spells in the graveyard. Definitely, Clarion uh, will kind of turn the tides. You get to wipe their board and swing in for four. Get you back to a healthy life total. Um, Ionize is just the go-to counter spell. It's a little easier on the mana than Sinister Sabotage. And it also, I think the two damage is a little bit better than Surveil. At one point I did have Sinister Sabotage in here, but the, the format is very, very aggressive and I had to end up cutting it. We are running a one of Response Resurgence. Five damage to target attacking or blocking creatures relevance versus Aurelia. Uh, the Resurgent actually has won me a game before where I was able to Resurgence on a crackling drake so i think my crackling drake was like a seven power it made it eight power attacked in attacked in and then pumped with a a integrity intervention that's another thing you can do for lethal is, is this is integrity actually gets plus three plus three to your drake because it's putting a card in the graveyard uh, so that was a a i think i was staring down lethal the next turn and was able to do resurgence to give myself an attack additional attack phase um and then pump my Drake up to perfect lethal, uh, doing 20 damage to the face between the t these these spells. Uh, so Chemister's Insight's the best card, hands down the best card in the deck. Is the whole reason to be pl playing blue, in my opinion, is just gets you above in card advantage. Uh, oftentimes this is going to give you four cards for one because you're you're getting rid of lands for the Chemister's Insight. The Crackling Drake's good here, but it's actually one of the worst cards in the deck. Uh, it does get you a lot of win conditions. I thought of going down maybe like a one of of it, but it's still pretty good as a four of. Again, it's, between this and Inexcapable Blades, I think is the, the call you need to make. The whole reason I don't like it in this deck is the only, well, it's, there's four and one between Nimazets and Crackling Drakes. And this is just, it just gets the Conclave Tribunals, the, uh, the Lava Coils, the Justice Strikes. They end up just killing the Crackling Drake and you're kind of left uh, with a card that was just a four mana draw a card to eat a spell and usually eat an irrelevant spell because you don't aren't running any other creatures in the deck. Ral's it, Ral, uh, is it Viceroy could definitely go up to three if you want to go three, three split with Crackling Drake. It's pretty good. It does eat Conclave Tribunals, but it's awesome to basically every matchup. It's very, very good against you. You, you end up usually negative throwing Ral immediately, clearing another card, and then you can just start plus winning Ral. Uh, eventually, if you get the ult that the ult can win, you do have a lot of ways to draw cards in this deck. So the Niv Mazette, the Perun is is really really powerful as well i could go up in, in count of nimazets but i just have a one of at the moment uh it depends if the meta shifts back over to more of the is it mirror then nimazets just amazing in that particular match and it's also pretty good versus demir but you have to keep in mind there's a couple ways they can kill this conclave tribunals one and the other one is the plague crafter so both of those you got to keep in mind that's why i only have a one of in here you also don't want this in your early hand because like i said the the, the format is right now incredibly aggressive there are demir surveil decks that are actually very aggressive and there are boros decks that are aggressive in celestia and I've even seen some Golgari decks that are they're, they're decently aggressive. There's another card that can kill your Nimazet, by the way, is the, the, the Crawl Harpooner. So keep that in mind. It is, is very good as a one of. I'm not sure it wants to be higher up in in count. And here's kind of one of our, our very versatile uh, slots. Expansion is actually extremely good versus Demir and other Is It decks. And I've actually used Expansion to copy like a respond, or a integrity intervention that my opponent was throwing at me to negate the the uh life point swing there or was that no that's a converted mana cost five what was it they were doing that i copied and was able to oh huh i can't remember oh maybe i maybe i copied oh yeah that was a cool one i did with expansion to explosion yeah i copied my own deafening clarion to do six damage each creature wiping all the doom whispers and all the thought thought bound phantasms that were on the board and they're all pretty big i also did that exact same play versus uh, a deck that had an aurelia with a counter on it as well as uh, a few other like a few other cards that had counters on it, and was able to wipe the board from Boros 
uh, through that play. So I, I do like Expansion of the Explosion because it can copy your own spells. And the Explosion part, of course, can just be a finisher where you can have a ton of, but you know, you, you have like 13 mana, you do nine to the face, draw nine cards, and then you can you can find the rest of your cards uh, to win the game. So again, this does have some versatility to it. Some other cards I've thought about is just like Radical Idea. You could probably go the Goblin just to reduce the, the cost of spells, but I, I don't think Goblin Electromancer is where this, this deck wants to be because of just how much removal is being run in this format. Um, the... I'd love a sideboard though to bring in like Legion uh, Legion War Bosses. I think that's a good card for this deck. Uh, let's just look at uh, eligible cards that are in Guilds Ravnica. Hey, look, Arena actually added this. About time. Maybe there is hope for this. So anyway, there's there is a lot of other unexplained disappearances. Of course, is good. You can uh, slow down your opponent and surveil. That's not a bad card uh, to throw in here. I even thought about like Murmuring Mystic as a, a pretty decent uh, option for this deck because you're casting a ton of spells. The one five butt on the Murmuring Mystic is quite large. It can block most of the things in the format, and then it can just start uh, flooding the board with the the bird illusions. I just thought it wasn't really necessary. Another one is the Dream Eater. I've thought of having in here, but it just really competes with some of our bigger uh, cards. This could be a one of, this could be higher. Uh, the thing is that what I was actually surprised is this meta, this, uh, the, the, the gameplay is actually pretty good for this Guilds of Ravnica block constructed. Uh, what I really like about this is the, the, the two colors that were really, really bad in draft and sealed, I would say is it and Golgari are actually competitive when you actually go to constructed. So the whole reason why I say the, it, the is it and Golgari where you always feel like you have half seed decks when you draft or sealed, especially sealed. Like draft, I've to be honest, I've done most of the drafts on Magic Arena. I've done some in real life. I haven't done any on MT Joe. And then my 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 real life paper scene doesn't have the greatest player base either. So um, it doesn't even matter what the format is. I usually end up with pretty busted decks just because uh, the quality of players drafting against me. Uh, arena though, if you try to draft an arena, I, I, I always say just avoid Golgari and avoid is it at all costs because a lot of times you can't get the, the, the type of power level you can get with the other car, the other, other, uh, the other guilds. So Celestia is decent in draft, but I would say that above and beyond Boros and Demir are overpowered in the limited environment with guilds Ravnica. When you actually have the entire pool option available for constructed, I think that Golgari, the bridge between Golgari and uh, is it comes way down. Is it's very good splashing into Celestia or into Jeskai is very good. Um, I'm thinking that you could even go Demir for a deck like the, uh, a control deck like this. I don't know if Ritual Soot is a way to go, but if, again, if the format slows down, then you could go into the Dream Eaters and, and some of the Surveil stuff like this Information Campaign and Thought Erasure, and that's a pretty decent, um... Uh, route to go again i'm going to try a mono blue mill deck actually it won't be mono blue it's gonna be blue black just all control cards so mission briefings thought erasures uh disdainful strokes uh counter spells and then have the win condition just be this uh this what is the card called there is a i don't know it's an enchantment i can't drown secrets i think drown secrets is kind of fun uh for a for a win condition with milling your opponent's cards um, I'm sure Phoenix, Arclight Phoenix decks are viable with Goblin Electromancer in the, the mix here. I'm, I'm sure a, a, a Quasi Duplicate uh, deck is actually good with Beetle, Beetle Mage. Like, there, there's a ton of power in Guilds of Ravnica, and the mana is good, and options are good. Um, I'm thinking about, I'm going to try the Experimental Frenzy or the Risk Factor with the, the, whatchamacallit, where is the, where is the card? Should be right here. Next page. Uh, the the feet the. I don't have any runaway steamkin. They're right there. Okay, so runaway steamkin, arc light phoenix, and then just a bunch of 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 spells you can cast like direct current risk factors, uh, things like that. Legion war boss. I even thought about maybe even splashing blue to reduce the mana cost of spells too. Then you can go runaway steamkin with with uh, experimental frenzy and the goblin electromancer and just go through your like go through tons of your deck uh, with being able to use the jumpstart cards get lands off the top of your library and just continue to cast continue to cast continue to cast and then get the mana from the runaway steamkin so anyway like I, i'm trying to say here is there's tons of options i highly recommend playing this format my only beef is that this is a one uh one game match whereas i think a sideboard would make this even more uh fun to play because then like i said there's a lot of options for this deck 
becoming like a switcherooey type deck. Uh, Inescapable Blaze, for example, should probably be in the Cyber Legion War Boss uh, when they cut all the removal and you can just take over the game that way. Anyway, let's go ahead. I'm going to join one more, but I, I do have to get to the store as usual. And I'll try to start doing these rather than sometimes I just get like it, like it's it's hard to actually play at a competitive level and commentate at least it is for me and it, there's a lot of pressure when I'm recording and I just don't like it so I, that's why it's, when I'm testing decks a lot of times I don't actually sh uh, record the gameplay but let's go ahead and play a Guilds of Ravnica constructed with the new deck that I didn't even name and we'll see. If we can get matched up, I, I like to show the Boros matchup, of course. That's the one that, that I've just been. That's that's one that I've only dropped a few games to as well. Boros can still do some very dirty things in the format, like turn one Legion, uh, the, the the Goblin, turn two, another Mentor creature, turn three, uh, Tejic, turn four, Aurelia. That's a really, really tough uh, draw to beat. Um, and there's, there's other ways you can build it, too, that's really, really tough. All righty, so... Maybe Arena will... Oh, there it goes. This is going to be a mulligan. I don't know. Actually, I think we can keep with the Justice Strike. And it's it's right on the verge. Like, you don't want two landers, and especially if we don't have a blue source. Blue is the most common. There we go. Now it ends up being a pretty good hand, because we do draw the island. Uh, but two landers... I Some with Arena, I, I, of course, this is anecdotal. Every time I keep a two lander on the draw, I never get another land. <laughs> and you think you'd have a, a high option of getting a land, because, you know... You still have plenty left, 24 left in the deck. Uh, anyway, it looks like we're going up against a mirror-ish deck. So anyway, this is going to be very, very annoying. I don't think we need to... We'll just Sacred Foundry to play tap. And we do have a good hand for the mirror, though. We have a Lava Quill for the Drake. And this could actually be a heavier on the spells with Radical Ideas. Niv is that's going to be a pain. Our opponent might just be... Well, we have Rao that can kill a Niv. But it's going to be a cat and mouse game. I just want to hit. Uh, yep, perfect. Just want to continue to hit land drops. I can put this in a play tap too. And we'll just have Chemister's Insight up after that. So Party Bees is on the is it? We are on the Jess guy. Uh, again, I, I don't. I'm not. A, oh, that's actually awesome because we can just Lava Coil and be done with it. So is it spells is what my opponent's on. I have not actually played against this deck yet. But having options like Lava Coil is really, really potent. So I'm going to again enter tapped Lava Coil. There's a Phoenix that's taken care of. This deck gets kind of a lot weaker without Phoenixes. And my opponent just like dropped the Phoenix rather than try to go for the spells in. So like, probably no Goblin Electromancer. Next turn we can actually go a Crackling Drake or I can just go Rowl. I'd actually like to see my opponent put out... Yeah, Electromancer's... Ooh, I don't know. I think what we're going to do... My opponent is keeping up mana is we're just going to Justice Strike down this Goblin Electromancer. Yeah, that's a rough, because Ionize is up. Unfortunately, though, there's nothing else I can do this turn. And let's not tap an Island. That's illegal. So I didn't think there would be a Goblin Electromancer, because I thought my opponent would run it out a lot quicker. They want to use an Ionize here. They can use an Ionize here. All right, so it's fine. It's one Ionize out of the way. And next turn, we can hopefully... Hopefully, we can establish an, an, an integrity intervention. Maybe I should have waited till my opponents... And again, go Radical Idea for a, a second Phoenix. So yeah, this one I could definitely lose. This seems to be a good matchup. Found two Phoenixes early. The Phoenixes need to find at least two before the first 20 cards, I would say. Other than my punish is going in with it, so that's good news. But holding up some cards. Crackling Drake. So Crackling Drake is kind of an issue. My opponent has an Ionize. My opponent has an Ionize. Uh, so here, I think the right play... I still think the Electromancer is the right card to get rid of. I could go Crackling Drake here, though. I got, yeah, I got two. My opponent gets another. I'm going to go with Crackling Drake. We hit a land, pass a turn here. We can pump up our own. If our opponent goes uh, Lava Coil here, I can actually pump it up. And we can actually block Phoenixes. 
I think my opponent would have countered if I had another Ionize. So Lava Coil, yep, we're going to pump it. See if there's another Lava Coil. If that's the case, it's just one of those matchups where we get outdrawn. Okay, another Lava Coil. Let's see if my opponent's got another way to bring back the Arclight Phoenix, though. Does not. We're down to a... Down to a... One card in hand. I, don't, I wonder why my opponent's not running those out. So we're going to go... We're going to go Crackling Drake again. And put a Boros card out. Still in kind of, yeah, we're we're definitely still in not the greatest shape. Beacon Bolt, do we just lose here? Yeah, it's perfect lethal. All right, well, had the Beacon Bolt, and that's lethal. Maybe I should have gone for Rowl, uh, Rowl and killed the Crackling Drake. Uh, but it is it Spell Deck gets us there. Had the Lava Coil, had the that Ionize. That Ionize was the, the deal there. So drop a game already. Uh, again, though, the, the that deck gets overrun by Boros. I do, I don't know, you can play it, but you'll you'll see. It's, oh, cool, Arena just dies here. So anyway, I guess that's that <laughs> with Arena. We'll uh, we'll try to show some other uh, with this matchup when I have time to do so. Anyway, this has been Kevin with Rogue Deck Builder. Thanks for watching.